Welcome to A Page in Science. I'm your host, Nathan Page. Have you ever wondered how the ears work? Well, listen up. Because today I'm going to show you how these extraordinary organs work. Let's get started. First we are going to look at what the ear is made up of. As you can see on the Play-Doh model, the ear is made up of three sections. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The uh, this part on the outer ear uh, is called the pinna. It directs the sound to the ear canal. This next part right here is called the ear canal, which produces wax to protect the ear from infection. And it also has hairs to keep objects like dust out. And this pink thingy right here is called the eardrum, which is a thin membrane that vibrates when sound waves reach it. The now on to the middle ear. The yellow part is called the hammer, which is a tiny bone that passes vibrations from the eardrum to the anvil, which is the orange thing. And that passes vibrations from the hammer to the stirrup. And the stirrup gets the vibrations from the anvil and sends it to the cochlea. And the stirrup is also the smallest bone in the human body. On to the inner ear. The, this, th this purple thing is called the cochlea, which is a spiral-shaped fluid-filled structure that is lined with tiny hairs that vibrate and cause nerves to impulse to form. To cause nerves. This blue semicircles are the semicircular canals. Three loops of fluid filled tubes which are attached to the cochlea and help you keep balance. These two things are the ear nerves. They they carry electromagnetic the electrochemical signals from the cochlea to the brain. This bread thing is called the eustachian tube, which connects the middle ear to the back of the nose. It equalizes the pressure between the middle ear and the air outside. That is why your ears pop here. Whoa, my balance seems to be off. Maybe I should go see an audiologist. An audiologist is a doctor who treats patients who have hearing, balance, and other ear related problems. They examine patients using audiometers, computers, and other devices to measure loudness at which sounds can be heard. The impact of hearing loss and the ability to distinguish sounds. Safety tip number one. Turn down the music. When listening to music, turn it down to a safe volume around 50 decibels. Also, when attending a concert, sit farther back to enjoy the music. Your ears should never ring because of music being too loud. Damage can occur to your e eardrum. Music should never be higher than 60% of the maximum of the dial and no more than 60 minutes a day, a 60 to 60 ratio. Safety tip number two. Protect your ears. If you have a job in a loud factory, using power equipment, or your mom just yells really loud, wearing earplugs can reduce the noise by 29 decibels. And if it gets really loud, around 90 to 140 decibels, you lower the decibels by 
wearing both earplugs and earmuffs, and reducing the level of noise by about 39 decibels. So, oh. look in the mirror, you see a gooey, waxy substance in your ear. You, your first reaction might be to clean it out as fast as possible, but wait, why is it there, and should it be there? Earwax is there to keep, help keep dirt, germs, and other foreign particles out. It is made up of sebum, which is a thick, oily substance, mostly made out of fat, dead skin cells, and apricine sweat. That's it. Safety tip number three. So, never put cotton swabs in your ear. It will just push the wax farther back and it could also poke your eardrum and damage it. Uh, leave those for your sister's makeup. Instead, use a cleaner that is intended for use in ears. Thanks for tuning your ears on and listening. I am Nathan Page, and this has been uh, Page in Science. I am Nathan Page, and you <laughs> to a blonde name! <laughs> <laughs> what the mad scientist does in his free time. Go. Safety tip number- wait, I'm supposed to stand up. <laughs> Can you no. stop it now?